I'll turn it right over to Chris. Chris, for the update. Great. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Good afternoon, folks. Good to see everyone. I think Mike's going to bring the meeting packet up momentarily. And we'll just hit some of the highlights here for you and, and get you on your way. We did want to catch you up on a couple of data points and what's been going on in the markets the last couple of months, which, uh, as you've probably all read, is a little bit different than what uh, much of the year um, has been. Um, and we'll talk to those reasons why uh, just momentarily when, when Mike's got the deck up. Um, we do have uh, a couple of, I think, Mike, in this deck is a little different than the earlier two meetings because we have a little bit of governance content for the for the pension for the town, uh, just for the committee to to see. Um, so if, I think if you jump to page six, Mike, in this deck, uh, my, in the lower right hand corner, exactly. So just a, a, a quick refresher. I know some of this the, the actuarial data, right, is all always a, a little bit dated and comes with a bit of a lag here, but we've just cataloged in summary fashion um, your, your last two valuation reports and, and pulled some of the high level issues here. And we'll roll this into some comps for you uh, statewide momentarily. The only thing I might say on this page, um, and it's to the town's credit, uh, you've been, uh, I think, in front of the wave of conservatism with respect to your return assumption. So you see down below, right, the six and a half percent number, at least as of uh, uh, the, the, the July 2020 time frame. And I think you continue to run a bit ahead of those trends hey Chris, statewide. Yes, Mike. Sorry to interrupt. Um, there was uh, another uh, someone else is on the meeting. If they could just identify themselves, perhaps we have a quorum now. Yeah. Hi, Rich Holton, the new president of the Weathersfield Police Union at PBO. Yes. Great. Hi, Rich. Um, and welcome. Uh, so just quickly here on this exhibit that Mike's got up, you're right, you're running it in the, half of the 720 20 Val and, and, and you, you folks in town do continue to run a little bit ahead of those trends from a conservative standpoint. I think last time we surveyed the, the data statewide for municipalities, we were somewhere around six and three quarters. So you've been kind of, again, we think appropriately uh, and, and conservatively running uh, uh, ahead of that activity you've seen statewide. And this is really, right, uh, I know front and center for committees and for towns and whatnot. And that's that ongoing challenge that expectations for markets going forward um, uh, continue to be a bit lower. Uh, and this uh, uh, you know, effort to kind of reduce those assumptions actuarially is um, a painful one, but, but probably ultimately a necessary one. Uh, for sure, and I think you're in good uh, in good standing on that front, versus that your 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 uh, peer communities around the state. Um, if you could jump ahead, uh, Mike here, uh, just kind of pick at a couple of highlights. I think we have a few pages of governance calendar collateral. The one number here I'd point out the very top of the page. Uh, you see there that the 20 largest public funds in the state for the period ending June 30th had achieved a return of 20 percent. Just as a reminder uh, to the uh, uh, to the committee, uh, the town plan over that same period had a, a pretty bang up year. You might remember the return for the one year period ending in June for the town plan was 31%. So pretty nicely and comfortably ahead of what you saw uh, a state uh, a nationwide, excuse me, for some of the larger plans. So that's uh, always an encouraging sign, I think. Um, again, nothing to act on, just more for, for your information. And then finally, like if you jump ahead just quickly, I think there's one, uh, yeah, this grid's a good one, I think. So we had just uh, you know, seen your two funded ratios at, at 72% or thereabouts, and I think you were around 75-ish fiscal year and 19. So you again, right in line with state averages, right? Uh, if you see there in the upper right hand corner of the grid on the bottom half of the page, we just catalog, catalog excuse me, those, those statewide averages. So, I mean, the, the takeaway again, right? Always uh, obviously subject to validation from, from Mil the Milliman folks, but I think from an actuarial standpoint, um, the plan remains in, in, in pretty good company and, and in good working order. Uh, any questions from folks just on some of that governance content? Relatively straightforward, I think. 
Um, doesn't sound like there's any, so we'll forge ahead here. If we could, Mike, just go to that page. We've been exactly this one that we used in the in the previous two meetings. So just to catch the full group up on and and, and some of the participants uh, to just this meeting, um, just really uh, uh, in summary fashion, wanted to gather for you some of the challenges that investors have been confronted with more recently. Uh, it really kind of centers on, on two or three items. And in the upper left-hand corner of the page there, you'll see we try to begin to decipher those. And they include uh, the Federal Reserve beginning to change their message around stimulus, right? And remember, they've got kind of two toolboxes, if you will, to do that. They've got um, what's called quantitative easing, and that's when they're purchasing securities in the marketplace to keep markets functioning and, and liquid. Uh, and they're starting to withdraw that stimulus in the coming months. Um, and the expectation over the next several months is they'll begin to take that down. And moreover, as you all know, they can also control at the very front end of the yield curve interest rates. And they've kept interest rates very, very low through the pandemic, right, to keep things kind of functioning and, 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 and investors incented. Uh, but uh, there is an expectation in the chart. You see uh, Mike's kind of highlighting in the upper right-hand corner of the page. There's the takeaway from this chart. It's a busy one. The takeaway is the markets are expecting, as are the, the, the Fed governors who participate in the process itself, to begin to raise interest rates, likely sometime before the end of 2022, um, and to do that a couple of times through 2022 into 2023. So those you can appreciate, right, cause a little bit of concern for investors We've got some policy gridlock in Washington that we've all read about, right, that remains unresolved and, 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 and will have to be worked through. And then finally, uh, uh, and unfortunately, of course, the Delta variant continues to uh, have an influence. Um, so those are things that uh, a recent, uh, created a recent backdrop, as we'll see momentarily, where returns in the markets have been um, much more muted and certainly in the third quarters and some of the numbers that you'd experienced in the plan uh, in, in the previous quarters to that. Um, the one thing that we've talked to investors about and, and I think is worthy of mention here and you see it highlighted in the lower left-hand corner of the page um, is how financially strong consumers are. And by many measures, what two are shown here on the page, net worth is as high as it's ever been for consumers and households. And moreover, the amount of debt being carried in services at, at toward lows as well. And that's encouraging, of course, right, from an economic standpoint, because consumers make up um, you know, 70% of the domestic economy. So there's certainly an influence there. Um, and we do think that strength maybe is being a little underappreciated in the markets. Are over maybe more importantly uh, could be the source of uh, you know kind of a bridge if you will to when some of these headline issues begin to settle down and, and maybe we revert back to a bit more momentum uh, in the economy and then the final thing on this page just is more of an FYI as well not anything for the committee to act on and it's a busy chart I admit in the lower right hand corner we've had a little bit of a reversion back to some of those areas of the market, at least on a relative basis, doing better than had done better very early in the pandemic. And if you can, you can see there kind of with the blue emboldened charts, uh, uh, growth names, large cap names, U.S. names outperforming their, their counterparts, if you will, across those segments of the markets. And um, again, just something to be mindful of that the portfolio that you have in place covers all these different areas as you know, from a diversification standpoint. And so you're getting that participation uh, from those good performing sectors, but it has been uh, fluctuating a little bit in terms of source. Um, that's a, uh, any questions there from uh, uh, the committee just on the landscape or the, the bigger backdrop before we look at the, uh, the portfolio itself and some returns? Doesn't, I don't see any hands. I don't, I don't see anything. As you always know, just interrupt me if, if something uh, catches your interest. If we could, Mike, maybe we'll jump ahead to uh, the depiction of the portfolio. Oh, you know, let me, I'm sorry, exactly. Let's go back to 11 for just a minute. Uh, my apologies. Just to give a little bit of framework and perspective to the committee. 
So before we look at the, the portfolio numbers, you, you do see the takeaways here. I'd turn your attention, if I could, to the encircled numbers. Those are third quarter numbers. And you can see we start to the left-hand side of the exhibit. The dark blue lines are the various fixed income markets. The gray lines are the, are the, inter, uh, the equity markets, excuse me. And then some of the, um, uh, the diversifying real assets to the far right. The takeaway here, right, is if you kind of link those dots together, you can see a pretty modest environment for returns in Q3. Fixed income markets basically flat in the quarter. Most segments of the equity markets globally were down a touch in the third quarter. Um, so that while the year to date numbers in some segments are a little stronger, um, we did have a, a, a bit of a reversal and, and a bit of weakness in, in, this, uh, in this third quarter. October, we don't show the numbers here. October's actually been very good in the markets and equity markets are up anywhere from you know, three to five, 6% in the month of October alone. Uh, all right, if that maybe with that, Mike, we could jump ahead to the uh, depiction of the portfolio at 930, just there it is, just to give everyone what's going on with the program. Just about, you see in the very upper left-hand corner, about $122 million of invested assets uh, uh, working on your behalf. Um, uh, from a, an allocation perspective, pretty darn close to target, right? We've got a little bit of an overweight to domestic equity, but I, I think in the, in the grander scheme of things and what we're trying to achieve with this uh, a pool of assets, that's okay for now. We obviously work very closely with, with Mike and his team and with the Prudential folks, if, if we need to kind of re, resource liquidity, for example, and where it's coming from in the portfolio, we'll look to these exhibits and, and, and make the necessary adjustments. But I think for the time being, we're in, in reasonably good working order from an allocation standpoint. All the managers you see listed here, right? If you can make it out, uh, the two managers in fixed income, the five domestic equity managers that you've got, the three international equity managers that you've got, um, all have our research teams kind of highest designation uh, and are in good working order. And, and we don't again have any recommendations or, or things to highlight uh, for the committee this afternoon. So I think we're in, in good shape there. And then finally, just if we skip ahead, Mike, to that next page, we should have performance. So a little bit of a down quarter is, is kind of hinted at. You see that in the middle of the page to the far left. So the portfolio was down about 1.3% uh, in the, in the qu third quarter, a little bit behind the benchmark. A couple of the fixed income managers struggled to touch. There were uh, two of the equity managers, LSV and, and one of your international managers, Dodge and Cox, that had a little bit of the way of weaker quarters relative to their benchmarks, although both really all four managers track records longer term are, are, are perfectly intact. So again, nothing for uh, that kind of quells up to being problematic from our standpoint. And then you see there year to date, if you can make it out, uh, Mike's got the cursor close to it uh, through September. The portfolio is up about just shy of 8%. And you see for the full year, some still pretty robust numbers up 22% and change. Um, a little bit of a lag on the three-year number. You see you're up about 10% per annum and a little bit behind benchmark. That really kind of flows out of this quarter and to some extent to uh, the onset of the pandemic. But again, I think on the back end, right, the managers have proven pretty resilient and the five, the seven, the 10 year, the longer dated numbers are still all right directionally where we want them to be. And, and uh, uh, this group's always been very patient with the managers, right? We don't flip in and out of them with, with great frequency. Um, and you've been rewarded for, for, for that patient. So I think we're in good working order by and large from a performance standpoint as well. Um, there's a lot more detail in this report, as you all know, but I think in the interest of time and, 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 and some of the other conversation you might be poised to have this afternoon, I'll, I'll pause at that and, and see if uh, the group has any questions. And it's, it doesn't sound like it, Mr. Mayor, so I'll, uh, I'll go on mute and Wait for the direction.
I apologize. I had to take a call from the governor's office on something <laughs> back and forth. Um, now, uh, Mike, with the full quorum, um, do we want to go back? Any questions for Chris, actually, first beforehand? Nope. OK, so go back to the agenda. I um, think, uh, Mayor, it'd be probably in order to uh, to call the meeting to order. Yep. Then just proceed from the top, you know, skipping over uh, skipping over Chris's presentation, obviously. Sure. Yep. Um, what we'll do is uh, um, we'll go we from. Have, we do have a quorum present. Yep. Um, so we originally had a um, workshop meeting, but with uh, a full quorum now, we'll go into a full meeting of the uh, pension committee and um, call that to order. Uh, is there a motion to call to order? You can do that. Okay, uh, Tom. Just, own, I think. Okay, well, Tom, yeah. can I get a second? Second. Kathy, thank you. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Okay. And we're in for a full meeting. Um, Mike has already added Rich in for attendance. Um, do we want to go right down to, uh, let's see, minutes were minute. attached? Yep. Um, can I get a motion to approve the minutes of August 2nd? So moved. Second. Rich and uh, should be someone uh, who was at the meeting. Yeah, Rich. I'll second it. Thanks, Karen. Yep. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed, nay. Ayes have it. Minutes are uh, adopted. And then uh, Mike did include the four meeting dates for. Let's see, are they on here? Yep, they are. Um, everybody take a look at the calendars. Monday, the 7th, February 7th, May 2nd, August 1st, and November 7th. That works for everybody. Put them in your calendar. And can I get a motion to approve the 2022 meeting schedule? So moved. We'll take Harry for that. And Tom, I'll take you for a second, Tom. Okay, we've got that. And then, um, I don't know if we- Vote on that. Oh yeah, all those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye, opposed aye. nay, ayes have it. Okay, um, I don't know if we wanna, do we have to have uh, Chris do a, another brief presentation or can that be included from the workshop into this? It'll be included. Okay, and then Pam's not on. Correct. No, Mike. Uh, Mike. Which Mike, Harry? Mike, Harry. Yep. We didn't discuss for this group the in-person or the Zoom. Okay. Yes. And to be consistent with the first two meetings, the trust and the firefighters, I believe it should be in person. Okay. Thanks, Harry. Anybody have a problem with uh, those four meetings in 2022 in person? Nope. Good. God willing, with everybody's hard work, Anthony and Karen, you guys can take care of us and we'll be uh, in person, no problem, right? Yes, sir. Okay. There we go. Um, I don't know. Did we vote? We didn't have to vote on that. So we'll be, we'll be uh, meeting in person. I think it's a consensus of everybody. Okay, um, Mike, did you want to talk about the uh, requests at all? Just uh, point out that the, in you know as is typically the case, it's always the case. We include in the on the agenda for the record uh, new uh, benefits that were approved for the quarter. So those are those are included. There's two from the police department, three from the board of ed, and one from the town. Um, and then just note the details there. No action required because that's. Uh, uh, that happens by virtue of the uh, terms of the plan. Okay.
Any old business at all, Mike? None that I'm aware of. Okay. Does anybody have any questions for either uh, Chris, the committee, or, or Mike? Hearing none. Okay. Motion to adjourn. Motion. Anthony. Aye. Second by Tom. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed nay. Ayes have it. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Have a good night. Bye, folks. Take care.